Living by example is the way to teach rather than to instruct. Mm -hmm. Poetry is also a teacher rather than an instructor because the use of words and the expression of words is what captures the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm. Poets even made hip hop better. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you a question. There was a movie that came out, I always refer to in my interviews, Love Be Trimes. Mm -hmm. And it was with Azalea Banks, mm -hmm. the resident of the movie. Mm -hmm. And it was about a girl who was into hip hop, but she went to school and her teacher told her hip hop is very limited and poetry opens up the world. Do you feel that way? And do you feel that poetry is a greater expressionist tool rather than hip hop? Um, I feel like, I feel like poetry, I mean, I don't know, because I don't necessarily want to clump poetry with hip hop, because like I said before, there are similarities and there are differences, but um, I, I'm gonna just go out and say, Hip hop is poetry, and poetry is hip hop. Explain yourself. When I think of hip hop, I think of poetry and music. When I think of poetry, I think of words without music. Add some music to it, you can sort of make it hip hop. You know, add a beat. Because at the end of the day, it's you have the rhyme scheme. You have uh, that's really all you need, honestly. A rhyme scheme. Okay. When I think of poetry and hip hop, I think of the Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Zora Neale Hurston, mm -hmm. Langston Hughes, James Baldwin. And I mean, how the study of their literature mm -hmm. actually made people understand the black experience, the Negro experience, mm -hmm. from Harlem, New York, out into the world. Mm -hmm. You also have the writers that came from that era that went into music as well. That inspired Marvin Gaye. That inspired Stevie Wonder. Gil Scott Heron, The Last Poets, right? When we get to the summation of how words are transformed into bars and how people are expressive, mm -hmm. why do you think poetry has always been the choice of every culture to express not only their hardships, but their love for creation? Um, I think it's most used, honestly, because um, <clears throat> I would say one, it's easy on the ears, you know, to just sit. It's kind of like sitting and having someone read to you. You know, it's real, um, it's sort of, sort of peaceful in a sense sort of peaceful, sort of um, calming, relaxing, just to, first of all, you know, people are lazy, so they don't necessarily want to read. No, it's true though. Like, people have gone from physical books to e-books to audio books because they're lazy. <laughs> yeah, <too>. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I think it's more, uh, I would say kind of more preferred. Poetry? Yeah. Because you know what? Poetry, when you think of poetry and stanzas, we can go into, um, uh, what's the guy with the big head who's weird? Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. We can go into The Raven, Nevermore. Right? And then I was kind of thinking that too. Like, a lot of people growing up in school, we all grew up on Shakespeare, basically, yeah, in a sense. Nut too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but even, like you said, in faith, you are a Christian, so mm -hmm. with a person who believes in the Bible as their, as their chosen book of faith, David wrote poetry, mm -hmm. Solomon wrote poetry. Um, you have allegories, you have proverbs, you have mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes or sayings. If you were into the Apoc Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, Jesus Chirac, you had wise sayings that are written in stanza, mm -hmm. not just in paragraph form. So. Poetry seems to have been something that was, as you say, easy, mm -hmm. but it also hit the heart of the person who understands life. Mm -hmm. Whether you had written stanzas, you did haiku, mm -hmm. or you even did spoken word. How do you define your poetry? Um, I do a lot of um, performance poetry, spoken word poetry. Um, in my books, you'll find some, I don't, know, I don't call them haikus, because they're not haiku, haiku. Yeah. Um, I sort of call them written shorts. 
a little word that I made up because you know it's not a super long poem it's not a haiku but it's just a little medium sized poem straight right to the point it's, it's usually just a a small idea I had and I finished the poem and I'm like you know I don't need to add any more like this is done I've already said what I said so I would say mostly performance poetry but um, I definitely have my little written sorts um, if we go into did you want to go into themes let's do it um, themes, and I feel like I talked about this in the other article interview. Um, okay. Themes, I have a lot of love themes, just because I, I'm a person who loves love. I love to love, and yeah. But um, I have a lot of inspirational themes as well, because I'm just a very optimistic person, and I just love to inspire people, mostly because I need it. <laughs> so... You know, because they say, you ever heard of like projecting, like you project onto somebody else? So like, the times where I need inspiration, I mean, yeah, inspiration and um, motivation the most are the times when I write my most inspiring and motivating poems. Just because I know that's what I need to hear. So you write by feeling, not by experience. I mostly write by feeling. I started off writing by feeling. And as I've grown, I've um, gone to writing about experience. I've gone to writing about other people's experiences. But um, I definitely started writing off of feeling. That's where all my love poems come. I started writing in high school. Had a little boyfriend, you know. Went to college, heartbroken. No, I, I get it, I get <laughs> it. But you know what, but that's very interesting because in one of the best, most classic movies of all time, The Five Heartbeats, mm -hmm. they said to Duck he would be a great writer when he learns to feel more. Mm -hmm. After he goes through a pain and he feels more. And in poetry, feeling is the thing that makes the poet the representation of the emotion, not mm -hmm. the experience. So that's why I asked you that question because when you write from experience, you're not really teaching, you're commanding. Mm -hmm. But when you write from feeling, People are walking through the journey with you and they're mm -hmm. experiencing you yeah. and the truth of who you are. So that's deep. That's dope also. Thank you. The thing about what I've seen from your art and not your work is this. Let me define that for you. Mm -hmm. Man gets a job. God gives you a work. Art is the expression of your life. Mm -hmm. So the art in which you perform and speak is the art of strength through gratitude. You're very gracious with your words. Was being gracious part of how you deliver or did you want to be, did you style yourself that way? Is that how you came up with it? How you do it? I just gotta say all thanks to God because <laughs> honestly, I can't, I can't even properly answer that because Every time that I get up on the stage, I'm mostly like nervous. Like I'm nervous right now. I'm just a nervous type of person. But I tell people all the time, like I used to be a very shy, quiet person. Like fifth grade, I had a science fair and I bottled up. I could not talk. And so to come from that to here and still be, you know, nervous when I go and do these things, I sort of let it motivate me these days. And maybe that's why that's like that, cause. I try to, as I'm speaking, I'm doing it right now. As I'm speaking, I just try to calm myself down and just... Drink some water. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's it good. Exactly. You're fine. You're fine. So, um, I would just say that's just... I would, I'm just going to chalk that up to the blessing over my life because I... It's amazing to me, too. It's amazing to you? Mm-hmm. Wow. Um... I don't know, like, I still, every now and then I still, I don't want to say doubt, that's, I don't like using that word, but, um, every now and then I have less courage in myself than I should, mm. and I think that's because of, I'm looking where I'm at and where I want to be, and you know, I'm sometimes not happy, but that's why only sometimes, because I have to remind myself, you know, things are a journey and a process and you have to go through the process to get where you want to go. So. You know what's deep? Now I'm having to get poetic with you. Go ahead. Because I don't want you to make the mistake most people who have the air of greatness about them mm -hmm. 
I don't want you to make the mistake that they make. And it's not enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. See, like, as a seed, when you're planted, mm -hmm. and that's when you find your talent, of course, God gives the increase. Mm -hmm. Because through using your talent, your stem grows. Mm -hmm. And like every flower, things have to attack your stem. You got the aphids, right? They come and suck the juice out the plant, right? Mm -hmm. And every now and then, God will send people or instances into your life to attack those things so you see the graciousness you're given, but also the gift you're given. Mm -hmm. So ladybugs eat them plant, you know, them aphids, right? Mm -hmm. And as the more and more they get eaten, the more your flower blooms, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not until you come into your full bloom that you understand why those things were there mm -hmm. and how they had to be taken away. You're on your journey and you have to appreciate it because every feeling that you have is a step to teach you as you get older. Mm -hmm. And when you're, when you're a 40 or 50 year old you, when you go back to 23 year old you, mm -hmm. you're going to be like, I knew so little, but I did so much. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring you to that next level. Mm -hmm. And understanding that as you boom, who are you? Now, and where do you want to be? Since you talked about where you want to go. Now, now I am the Great Matter Poet. Um, where I want to go is um, a lot of things. But basically, where I want to go is, uh, and the name might change, but Great Matter Poetry LLC. That's where I want to go. I want to start a business and that's why I said the name might change because it's not gonna just be a poetry business I want to um me and my friend have talked about publishing and um, I have my own little personal ideas like I have the idea for community center and things like that so I'm definitely I want to I'm already in entrepreneurship but I definitely want to grow in that and be my own brand, basically.